Something about this sound satisfies my ears. It's fresh. It's authentic. It's as if some artifact that had just begun to sprout its wings got buried under this digital high-tech age and is waiting to be rediscovered. Why don't we spend the next six minutes rejuvenating the essence of this lost artifact? Polaroids are still being used today, but only in the name of a digital filter. Why though? Why is this unnecessary wide border around a picture so trendy even today? So much so that we prefer to digitally unresolve an image to give it a Polaroid effect. Maybe because there's something unique about that initial process that stuck with us to this day. The instant camera came into existence in 1948 when an American scientist Edwin Land first designed and produced it. Later, a corporation named Polaroid patented its commercial production, and the name Polaroids became synonymous with instant film photography. Let's do one thing. Let's hop on the light beam and trace its path into the camera. Here we go. The light entering the camera from the subject first meets the camera at the taking lens system. This is the first component through which light passes. The taking lens is a short four element f by 8 lens. f by 8 is a number that basically decides how much light should enter the camera. Focusing is achieved by the first movable lens. A gap just between the third and the fourth element of the taking lens system houses the shutter blades. They are controlled by an electronic circuit and this is one of the main reasons we required a DC source to use these cameras. Other than that, it's just good old optics. The shutter opens, increasing the effective aperture of the lens till an electronic command tells it to shut it again. The exit to this four element system is basically a virtual aperture through which light passes and is fixed for all focusing settings. All of this happens within milliseconds. past the taking lens system it required an intelligent arrangement indeed because the path of the light had to go two ways for viewing through the eyepiece and capturing the same view on the film the direct image had to be displayed to the photographer with an even number of reflections to avoid the reversal of the image this was done by using a plain mirror a front surface renal mirror and a perch stop a concave mirror and an eyepiece all these components with precision positioning made it possible for the photographer to view the light entering from the taking lens strikes a plain mirror placed at a particular angle this mirror reflects the light downwards and onto a front surface renal mirror A front surface mirror is simply a kind of bent mirror. Light gets reflected from this mirror and passes through an aperture stop, but not before another reflection from the plane mirror. That is, the light would be reflected off the Fresnel mirror, be incident at the upper portion of the plane mirror again, and then reflect from there and pass through the aperture stop. This double reflection solved the problem of achieving an even number of reflections and preventing image reversal. The aperture stop is just big enough that the light can fall exactly within the area of last two optical components that is the concave mirror and an eye lens. These two together act to form a real image. Although elaborate there still existed certain optical challenges in this setup. which were countered by incorporating excellent design considerations for capturing an image the shutter button is pressed this button triggers a cocked spring mechanism that moves the fresnel mirror lifting it up against the plane mirror and at the initial position of the fresnel mirror now lies the exposed photographic film oh and surprise surprise on the back of the fresnel mirror is attached another plane mirror which does the job of this mirror now now that our setup is ready a click sound the shutter exposes the film for that 1 millisecond and the mirror focuses the light down towards the photographic film the basic idea of the film is to capture patterns of light using special chemicals the light hits the film and starts off a chemical reaction a normal film consists of a plastic base that is coated with particles of a silver compound 
when this silver compound is exposed to a large number of light photons, it reacts to form silver atoms. These silver atoms coalesce into larger granules which you can see here. The black and white film has one layer of these silver granules while the color film has three layers. Here, the light sensitive layers are divided into three, blue, green and red, the RGB values we are familiar with. To turn this into a picture, you have to develop the film using some more reagents. The three dye colors are cyan, negative of red light, magenta, negative of green light, yellow, negative of blue light. Developed color film has a negative image. In slide film, the two dyes that attach to the unexposed area combine to form colors captured at the exposed layer. The film passes through rollers which in addition to ejecting the film out of the camera, also press down on the film, thereby releasing the reagent from the borders of the film. The Fresnel mirror is brought back down to its original position and the capturing process is complete. Although this process may sound quite involved and cumbersome, it can last as little as 1.5 seconds. The technology may be lost, but we hope you salvage some of its antique fragments. If yes, then our purpose here is fulfilled. Thank you for watching.